motive. Why do you want to get married? If you can't clean up your motive. If you can't look at the whole picture. And sex is part of the benefits of marriage. Don't get me wrong. But it's, it can't be the major reason or the only reason why you're getting married. So I started this from my story where I said why I wanted to even go for sports. So I'd already, I'm trying to show you that marriages fail before they start. No marriage fails in marriage. And I've been a counselor for like many years, 20-something years. No marriage fails in marriage. If you're going to succeed in marriage, eh, we can start put you on the path of success now, today. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you are the right person, you will most likely find the right person. Are you here, somebody? If you want to buy a used car, a Nigerian used car, who is the best person to take to inspect the car? Your tailor or your mechanic? From the day you carry your tailor to go and check if you should buy this used car. <laughs> the wrong person can't give you the right advice. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm trying to show you that, look, the things that make things succeed is before the issue, it's before the marriage. So I told my friends that, ah, I must go for this, you know, what can I do? So we checked all the spots. Football, you know, it's a tight People already know who and who is good. There's a large reserve bench already self. So, and I was not really playing football that level that time. So I knew I can't enter football. Check volleyball. They already had their team. Check sprint. Sprint is obvious by speed. Everybody knows who and who is the three, four fastest runners. The other ones have gone. I checked everything. The only thing that there was space was long distance race. And it wasn't really that there was space. There were three people that everybody knows does represent us in long distance race. Because again, to do long distance race, it's not a all commas affair. We know the people that can do it, that can do it. So we had three people that were reigning champion. And only three slots were available. So nobody contested with them. I said, ah, they just let the three people be reigning, reigning, reigning. I said, we contest with them. I was winning one person. Only three can go. And they already had their three. I said, we do hits with them. And we all agreed. I now told my friends. Because we, those boys, those three boys, they wake up early in the morning, they go to the field. They go and jog around the field. Rehearse. Almost every morning. Me, I wake up. They, and they wake up early or like 5 a.m. Do that and come back and pray for class and go to class. Me, I wake up like 10 a.m. I, I, I didn't used to go to class. No, I was not in school for academics at all. So me and my best friends, we don't go to class at all. Wake up like 10. First thing we do is to go and light cigarettes and smoke. Secondary school. Boarding school. So, we now discussed my career. And my friends now agreed with me that since it's 1,500 meters that they do in the field, let's measure the dormitory. Like this wall to wall. How many times will it make to be 1,000? They helped me to measure it. And they were timing me. See, you can't successfully fail without useless friends. <laughs> useless friends. You cannot successfully fail without useless friends. I'm telling you, and some of you do the same thing. You're asking advice from people that know nothing about relationship. So they won't compound the issue for you. Say, go and beg him. <laughs> it's always interesting. When, 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 when ignorant people advise ignorant people, I mean, it gets worse. Sometimes I see ladies fighting over a loser. You are dating someone, he's cheating on you, then you are fighting the girl he's cheating with. To win who? If you win the battle, you are still a loser. I say a loser. You see, these are some things people advise themselves. People advise themselves. He, he called the girl. Call the girl. Let's insult her. Ah. You're wasting your time. The problem is not the girl. The problem is not the boy. Because many people think he's a boy. He's a boy. He's a cheater. He has already told you who he is. It's for you to decide if this is what you want out of your own life. That's what I'm saying that the, when marriage is fail or not, it starts with you and it starts before the marriage. When you know what is below your level, don't fight the person. They've made an offer. In life, you can't tell people not to make an offer. You can walk to a Ferrari store and tell them that, can you buy this thing for 100 naira? You can say it. Just that <laughs> the, the, where they will throw you is what I don't know hope the outside is not concrete because they will throw you outside 
But to make that offer, you have a right to say, this is what I'm offering. And you have a right to either accept that offer or not accept it. To be shouting that, how dare you make this offer? No. They have a right to say, this is what I have. This is what I can afford. Are you getting what I'm saying, somebody? So my useless friends, help me to count the dormitory. How many times I would go to make it 1,005? And they were timing me, and I was running inside dormitory. When my mates were going to the field to practice, early in the morning, run around, they run the real thing and time themselves. I was running in this one and smoking, and they were counting for me. And the day of the heat came. On your marks, set, and I was very popular in school. So I had fans. That's what I knew in this life. It doesn't matter how many fans you have. If you don't have the expertise, you will still fail. My fans gathered. Kinzo, Kinzo, Kinzo. Because I was, I was a popular guy. People wanted me to win. People wanted me. See, I had support. In this life, support doesn't count if you're not ready. Don't you see many weddings? Everybody's dancing with you, spraying you, clapping. That, that wedding will fail in a week. Because they're not prepared. They are not prepared. It doesn't matter how many people attend the wedding. It doesn't matter how many people clap for you. I, I, I can't count how many times I've seen couples dance. Nowadays, couples focus so much on the dance. Hey, God. Pity, I don't think we've fully, we've, we've, we've not yet fully seen the impact of this social media generation. We've not yet seen it. All. It's going to take like 10 years to start seeing the problems. And social media has good and bad. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but the way we are... Now, you can't even teach anything now without dancing. The only way young people learn now is like... They can't, nobody can read again. That's, that's, everybody's a TikTok dancer. You can't teach anything now without doing like this. So we're getting dollar and dollar. Everything is dance. You can't talk without that. You must dance. <laughs> Sounds funny, but it's going to be horrible. Okay, time will come in classes again. They won't need blackboard. Teacher has to dance to see if you don't. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, like nobody's going to listen to the teacher. This is how we train. This is how we train people to do surgery. Surgery, <laughs> because students can't get it if he doesn't dance. We're shaping culture the wrong way. We don't know. Are you here, somebody? <laughs> We've not yet seen the impact of this social media issue. <laughs> So, um, so, so I, the way I see weddings now on social media, everything's about the dance. That dance, they even go and choreograph. I said, this part, they don't cancel it. They have time to go and choreograph this dance. They choreograph the dance, oh, bride and groom. Have you done canceling? The journey is foul. The supporters don't count. They all go home. The wedding is not the marriage. Ay, 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 ay. I said the wedding is not the marriage. The wedding is a few minutes. The marriage is for life. The wedding is for people. The marriage is for both of you. The wedding is a ceremony. The marriage is a covenant. Are you here, somebody? So, they were counting for me. And supporters, Kinzo, Kinzo, day of the race. On your marks, set, go. I took off. My plan, PT, I had a strategy. I see strategy is good. Just that sometimes some people's strategy is dead. <laughs> My plan was to follow the guy that comes first. If I follow the guy that comes first, I'll come. That's my plan. One of the most stupid plans. You will know a failure by the goals they set. I told you most marriages that fail is not even failing the marriage. It has been failing long before the marriage. See the kind of goal I was setting. I wasn't planning to win. If you are here, one of the things you mo- what, what is even your idea of a good marriage? What is your perspective of a good marriage? If you think in marriage, they must beat you. If you think that's okay, that, uh, 
If somebody loves you, they must beat you now. If there's no jealousy, then there's no real love. All kinds of warped perspectives. That takes me to this book also. Um, when am I ready? It's on that book I wrote. Because I wrote it to prepare people's mind. I can't find my When Am I Ready? I don't know if you say, have you seen When Am I Ready? There's a book, it's part of the books outside. When Am I Ready? Because I had to deal with perspectives. You are not ready for marriage until you have the right perspectives. Peter, I posted something some days ago of a woman that was sharing her story. She said she was in a relationship with somebody and the guy was coming home with six of his friends. And the guy told her ahead that, look, I'm coming home with six friends. Please pound yam for us. And by the time the guy got home, she was saying her story that there's no way only her could pound for six people. That it was a lot. All right? The particular pounded thing they were doing wasn't just normal pounded yam we do. I think the one has different things in it or something. But she said it wasn't something she could do and pound for six guys. That she was hoping that when, when, the, when they get home, so one of, one of the guys can help. He said, when the guy came back with his six friends and she brought that leg, that the guy just told his friends, because there was already soup. She had already cooked soup. They are not married. This is dating. She had already cooked soup. <laughs> it's to pound six people's yam that is the issue. And she doesn't mind to pound for one or two people. She says she can do it, but she can't pound the whole six. That she's hoping that when they get back, one of them will also help to pound. <laughs> so when the guy came back with his six friends and found out she was drawing this leg, the guy shall have found a way to discharge the friends that they would eat on that day. Discharge them. And beat the hell out of her. As in, she said he used laptop charger. When they say wipe, I'm called, and you said the vlog, I'm, I thought it was just a metaphor. I didn't know people were actually doing it, though. I thought it was just, you know, a metaphor. So the guy used laptop charger, beat the hell out of her, used belt, beat her to a pop. <laughs> and that's, you see, now I'm saying this to say this, because that's not even the worst part of the story for me. The issue was that when I posted it, there were still, the comments I was seeing was heartbreaking pity. There were guys that were saying, eh, but if she couldn't uh, pound the yam, why didn't she go and buy, you could buy pounded the yam now, you could buy fufu now, you could do this. Or why did, he tell, why did he tell him in front of his friends? Why did... That's not the point. That's not the point. What I saw was that there's a large amount of people that didn't see that as weird. That one adult beat another adult with charger. As in better beating. This is not that I play with your beating one. No. Wipe I'm caught, you know? I thought that it was better for my guy. There, there were not many people. Or let me say there were a lot of people that didn't see it as weird and out of the question. So that tells me these people will either beat or be beaten. The way that thinks it's okay to beat somebody or okay to be beaten like that. Because that lady didn't leave. Oh. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The success and failure is before you marry. Nobody fails in marriage. People fail before marriage. They just manifest it in marriage. Is somebody gets what I'm saying? Yeah. When I watched the full video, one of the things she said was that she stayed in this, continued staying in the relationship. And that at one point, she traveled for school. Somebody told her that, that why you travel, somebody comes to live with your boyfriend. So one day she came to do a surprise visit, because that's the plan they gave her. That's the strategy. Yeah. You can't successfully fail without useless. useless friends. Please desist from just getting your friends that are not professionals or really knowledgeable to just advise you. That's why you have PT, you have pastors, you have ministers, you have counselors in church. Let somebody that is not in love advise you. Are you to hear when they advise you, please? Because to advise is one thing. To hear in a different college. So, she said she did the surprise visit as they planned. And true, true, there was a girl there in the night that was going to spend the night. And the girl was just, she, this is what she's saying, that the girl was just lying down on the bed without a... Uh, I said, that's not the issue. She can lie down anywhere. You shouldn't be even there long enough to be knowing where she's lying down. You see, 
That's what perspective. That's what that's what pay. If your perspective is so low, there's nothing I can do for you. So that uh, the girl was lying down. I think she now either spoke to the girl or threw the girl's things or something, something. I can't remember now. That the guy said this girl must sleep here. And that three of them slept on the bed. Don't say Jesus. Oh. You need to make sure what you are calling normal is normal. Is your normal normal? That's how I usually say it. Perspective. What's your perspective about marriage? And whether I like it or not, like I said, your experiences have already colored your perspective. Whatever you have seen before, whatever you have heard before, has already affected what you think is normal in marriage. It's part of why. When people see me post some things, it's not just for a show. I'm trying to help people's perspective. Because if we're not showing healthy marriages, if all you see are these guys divorcing 13 times, you would think it's normal. If all you see is your parents' marriage and it didn't go well, you think it's normal. If all you see is a man beating a woman, you would think it's normal. Your normal is not normal. The dressing you are dressing now is just what you have seen. Nobody gave back to you dressing like this. You came naked. You are dressing like it's what you have seen. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying, guys. We were in London one time, we saw one woman. No, we saw one girl, a small girl. She was literally naked. Crop top that was up to here, piercings everywhere. In London, oh, it's a young girl. I suppose, who, who's, I don't mean young girl, I mean under 10, 13 max. You know, that's kind of small, 11, something like that. But she was so loosely dressed, piercing. Ah, I said, who is this one? This young. And I saw her mother. Perspective. Perspective. <laughs> Her mother was jewelry. The body inside that was small. The whole thing was jewelry. Piercing everywhere. The same kind of top. Same kind of shorts. shorts. So that's what she's seen. That's her normal. She would think you are the abnormal one when she sees you. Somebody get what I'm saying? So after the three slept that night and all that, I think in the morning or the next day or something, there was an altercation between the two girls and that this guy beat her again to a pop. Better beating that, you know, black eye everywhere there. And said, this girl must stay. And she didn't leave the relationship. Yes, so what is your perspective? It determines the goals you set. When you are saying you want to marry, for men, all the men, can I see your hand? Men, give me, give me. Men, please, can I challenge you? Can I put your hand down? Please, men, can I challenge you? You are the one that would set goals for the family. Women are incredibly adaptable. Maybe tomorrow, I don't know, there are many things in my mind, so if I can't do it today, maybe tomorrow I'll talk about that. Women, you need to understand, the way God created you, God created you, created you adaptable. The challenge with that is that if you marry a dunce, you adapt to it. You're, it's a natural gift you have. In Genesis chapter 2, he said, I'll find him a helper that is suitable and adaptable. You are incredibly, you are so adaptable, you don't know. Now, there are one or two stubborn, rebellious women, but that's not the, that's not the represent the, the bulk of women. The bulk of women are created adaptable. If a woman marries a Yahoo boy and a gangster, she will be the best gangster wife you have ever seen. If that guy becomes born again, becomes a daddy geo, that's a woman who will become the greatest mommy geo you ever seen? That's why when they raid cities and raid towns, they kill only men. Men are totally not adaptable. Very rigid in their thinking and in their way they see things. Men they will hear from their ear. The ear for men is for balance, not for hearing. Those of you that have dated or married, you know what I'm talking about. Men don't hear anything. So they kill the men, but they usually don't kill the women. The women are going to adapt. Women will change the religion. Women will change anything. They are created that way to adapt. So men, first responsibility is on you to determine how this family is going to go. What is your vision for this family? Unfortunately for most men, your instincts don't push you so much to family life. Your first instinct is money. So you have to go beyond your instincts. Living by your instincts is living in the Adamic nature. You are living in the, in, in, in the, in the nature of the man, the fallen man. Are you here, somebody? You have to go beyond instincts and live by inspiration. 
of the Holy Spirit. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So there's a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. So if you follow the natural order, you're going to end up like the normal men, which they think money is everything. The way it works, and women, unfortunately for you too, try not to live by instincts. Because women, your own instincts, apart from being adaptable, your own instincts is family life. You like marriage. You don't have to fight it, but you have to manage that desire. It's a good desire, but you have to manage it. If somebody gets what I'm saying. Because everybody's chasing what they came from. Men are chasing productivity and money because they came from the earth. Women are chasing men because they came from men. Are you here, somebody? Everybody's chasing where they came from. So most men instinctively will have no family life goals. All their goals is how much money I want to make. You are living at, if you are living like that, you are living at a very low level. I'll, still, I'll probably still talk about this tomorrow. You are living at a low level. You are living instinctively. That's the, your fallen nature. As a child of God, you must understand how much God values family life. The rest of the family, they are under your responsibility. So you must have some basic goals. How do you want my family? How do I want my family to look? How do I want my relationship to look? What are we going to be doing together as husband and wife? Where are we going together as a couple? Is somebody getting this? There will be no violence in this home. There will be no curse words in this home. Men, you are going to set that target. I see some couples, the kind of language they use. Married people, oh, you are fool, bastard, idiot. Are you okay? You are crazy. You must be mad. God punish you. These married people. No, no class. No, no standards. Are you here, somebody? Perspective is important. The kind of goal you are setting... That is normal. All men cheat. This I think girls are spread among themselves. Manage him. All of them are cheating. You set the goals right from now. And you engage only a man that has the same kind of ideas, same kind of standards and values that you have. So you are dating somebody now and every day he's trying to pressure you to sleep with you. But you want to hold on to the relationship and change him. You are not the Holy Ghost. You can't change anybody. I'm not saying, even when he's a perfect man, there might be times when he's tempted. I get that. But if he becomes his lifestyle and he's pressuring you, that, as in, he doesn't even see anything wrong with it. Oh, there's so much in my mind. That I, but are you getting blessed at all? There's so much. The person that wants to cheat with you will cheat on you. Mm. Mm. If he wants to cheat with you, he will what? Cheat on you. Because the standard for you as a believer is to live sex till you marry. But he is pressuring you, or sometimes she is pressuring you. Sometimes the partnership, both of you are pressuring you. There is nothing there now. At least we are going to marry. You can't choose one and not choose the consequence. You can't choose action and not choose reaction. If you both of you start that lifestyle, cheating won't stop just because you say, I do. Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. The wedding doesn't change your character. I mean, you know, many people actually think that once I climb this holy altar, this altar of fire, once I say, I do, hey, I'm a changed man. No, baby. <laughs> if you're watching pornography now, you'll still watch in marriage. If you're masturbating now, you'll still masturbate when you marry. <laughs> if you have no financial sense now, you will have none then. Nothing is going to change. Except that now your actions directly affect another human being. That's all that's going to change. Before, your actions only affected you. All I do does is that from now on, your stupidity is not just your issue. <laughs> Your stupidity is not a federal issue. Before it was local police that come when you do stupid things, but now when you do stupid things, it's FBI that will come. <laughs> because now it's a federal issue. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You know, abroad they have cases where they call local police. Where they call, if it's basic thing, if it's, if it's a, you are robbing a shop, they will call NYPD. If you are robbing a bank, it's a federal issue. It's FBI that will show up. 
That's what marriage is. Now your actions affect other people. Does somebody get what I'm saying? Someone told me. Is it? I was canceling them. Is the pastor? He's okay. I'm okay with him watching pornography. He should just not masturbate. This is that kind of decisions people want to make. They don't know that your actions has con- it always carries along consequences. You can't choose one and leave the other. Are you here, somebody? You can't choose one and leave the other. Who you are now affects what will happen. So, where was I in the story? Perspective, yeah? What kind of goals are you setting? I, I, I had clear goals of the kind of marriage I wanted. I wanted to marry my friend. My wife is the first person I ever, I've ever dated in my life. So, I didn't do many. I didn't do ten relationships before I found the right one. No. She's the whole first. Now, I'm saying that you don't have to kiss many frogs. You don't have to jump around. You don't have to do trial luck. Once you get your motives right, get your perspectives right, she's the first person I ever dated. Because I knew what I was looking for. I had a vision. I had it clear. The kind of vision I had, it was clear. So, when you, when, you, when you are prepared, your decisions are already made before you get there. Are you here, somebody? Many of you are making your decision based on what you see. No, 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 no. If you have already decided that I can't marry someone that is not a Christian, by the time I meet you, I'm not a Christian, I'm not praying that day. I say, Lord, what I say about John? Even though he's not a Christian, he's fine. No, 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 no. If you have your clear standards, I don't know if somebody gets what I'm saying. It's choice is easy. That takes me to this book titled, Who Should I Marry? I met many girls, many fine girls before I met my wife. But I never asked any of them to for a relationship, never thought of dating any of them. Because in my interaction with them, I knew they were not the one. Because I had an idea of what I was already looking for, the kind of vision and scope I had of my life. I knew where I was going. I knew that whoever I needed to marry had to be able to fit into this plan. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I met many people, but no, okay. God bless you. Thank you. Some, everything was okay, but they said they can never live in Nigeria. So God bless you. It's not a bad thing. It's just that we're not headed the same way. Are you here, somebody? Don't stop fighting people who are trying to force people to fit into something. The best relationships happen when two of you, your paths cross. When I mean your paths cross, I don't just mean physically. I mean you put your visions align. You are headed your spiritual goals in life. Not that you, you really love God. They don't love God. You are dragging them to church. Ah. I'm looking for somebody that will be gingering me, that will ginger herself. Not that you are the full person dragging this sinner around. No. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying, somebody. Because I see many Christians that battle marrying unbelievers. Why do you want to marry an unbeliever? Why do you want to marry an unbeliever? <laughs> if you marry an unbeliever, what you are doing? Egg, come out. People that did egg for me, come out. Sorry, I'm going to be dragging. Egg, come now. Come, come, come quickly. Who is Shell? Shell, that have no shape. Who is so? Spirit. If you, if favor marries an unbeliever, what you are marrying is, is just two. Because his, his spiritual life is dead spiritually. So, bye-bye. You are marrying two. Um, see, come back, spirit. Please, I need you to catch this. If you marry a Christian, eh, he is supposed to and is striving to be guided by this person. So, he stands here, face that way. So, face that way. Body face that way. This is God. God is that light there. If the guy is born again, he misses a life spiritually, and he might not be perfect. He might be, he might be in a different, there are many levels of growth he can be in spiritually. However, he is faced and headed in this direction. At any level he has reached. Some people have reached here. People like pity, they are right in front of the throne of God. We, we are still somewhere here. Uh-huh. Some people are near this guitar. This guy is here. We are, but we are all headed. In this direction, there's nothing bad. Everything here is good. There's forgiveness, there's mercy, there's understanding, there's love. It's flowing well. Even when you make mistakes and fall, you will stand up and still be moving. This, that, this is the direction. There are discussions that we can never have. 
I want to marry a second wife. It's not a discussion in this line. I want to divorce you. It's not a discussion in this line. I get what I'm saying. Now, if the guy is not born again, all of you turn. You see how black this place is? He's going to hell. And he's facing the throne of the devil. That's his father. That's who controls him. Everybody has a spirit influencing them. Ephesians chapter 2, DJ. Do you have scripture? Do you have where you can put scripture on the screen? DJ, give me Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1. I call the guys that put scripture for me, DJ. Is there a DJ in the house? DJ, Ephesians track 2. It's up, thank you. Spirit, so Lombardi, people are facing different places. Spirit, first there. Ah. <laughs> Read with me, everybody wants to go. Number one, they say when you were not born again, you were dead. If you marry someone that's not born again, he's spiritually dead. My wife always says it this way that how many of you here will go to a mug, a mortuary, to pick a fine boy? She says, A fine boy. Just that he's dead, boy. He's fine. Oh, he's rich. He's rich. He has bends. Boy, he's in the he's a cops. That's how it is when you as a born again Christian. Grandma and believer. I say he's dead. And you two were once dead. Anybody that's not born again is dead. When you become born again, you are quickened. That means made alive. That's why you see the word quickened. It means made alive. So number one, he's dead. Number two, verse two. Wherein in time past, you walked according to what? Do you see? They are walking according to the course of this world. There's a co- the man that's not born again has it. See, when, when people marry unbeliever and say he's cheating, I say, no. What do you want him to be doing? He's drinking. No. It's like saying a sinner is sinning. Where in time past, you work because there's somebody that's going to ask, can I marry a Muslim? Can I marry someone that's born again? And I, I'm answering you. He's working according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The what? The spirit that does what? So, number one, he's dead. Number two, there's a spirit at work in him. No matter how nice he is now, spirit is like epilepsy. It will show up one day. He's hidden. It might look normal now. He says he's nice. He's caring. Okay. Wait till two years into the marriage. The spirit will catch him. He says, slap her. Sound her. <laughs> I believe they call it sounding because of that. The wing that happens. When they give you a real good slap, you'll be hearing <laughs> Ten minutes after. Are you here, somebody? He said there's a spirit that is at work in them. Every Christian has a spirit at work in him, the Holy Spirit. Every unbeliever has a spirit at work in them, the spirit of the devil, evil spirit. And Holy Spirit pushes us to do holy things. Evil spirit, as the name implies, does what? Evil things. These evil things has no scope, has no limit. From beating you, to abusing your kids, to cheating, to divorce, to, to, to verbal abuse. There's no limit. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Verse 3. He said, among whom also we all had our conversations in time past, in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by what? By nature. So when you become born again, God doesn't change your actions. He changes your nature. When your nature changes, the way you see a woman changes. The way you see a man changes. Oh, you don't join these feminist people oh, that say we don't respect men. Men and women are equal. This is, this is when you're born again, you, you, your nature is changed. Are you here, somebody? When you're not born again, your nature is, is still different. Hallelujah. So when you marry a guy that is not born again, he totally has no spirit. Spirit is weak. It's not alive. So this, the flesh is the one that is leading him. I say the desires of the flesh and of the mind. The mind too is following Hallelujah. Egg, you can see that. Let's clap for Egg again. People form drama team of the church. Thank you. But are we getting what I'm saying? Let me round up. So, 
I, I knew some of the qualities I wanted in a wife. I knew she had to be my friend. Somebody I could hang out with. Somebody I could talk with. Of course, she had to be fine. That's okay. <laughs> she had to be spiritual. She has to love God. See, spiritual intimacy is not measured by when we pray together. It's measured by what you, your relationship will go without me. Are you here, somebody? You want to marry somebody that doesn't know one verse of scripture? Not even interested. See, he doesn't, doesn't remember scripture, but he remembers the whole 11 players of Asna and the people on the bench. But he doesn't remember one verse of scripture. He's not dull. He's just uninterested. Are you here, somebody? So, perspective. So, my own perspective was, I will follow the guy that comes first, and I will come second. Wrong goals. Race started. On your marks. Set. Go. I followed the guy. And the fans were shouting, Kinzo, 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 Kinzo. Maintain second. I'm telling you. I was looking at like my dreams are going to come to pass. Second. Did first lap. This second lap was not final lap. I didn't know that um, in long distance race, people save their energy yeah. to the last lap. I didn't know that. I thought we have this is it. As we are, like, as we are so shall we be. When they reached the last lap, they blew home. Pam! All those guys took off. Pow! They all increased their speed. I was using all my energy to be second. When I saw that, it took, I wanted to go. My heart said, if you try it, <laughs> you will die here today. <laughs> you know when they said the, the spirit is willing? They say you can't move. If you try, you die here. As they all took out, I couldn't. Because I, I used all my energy to come second since. <laughs> so, as they took off the last lap, all of them increased their speed. I couldn't meet up. The only thing I said was there, was there was a part of it that was bush <laughs> at the ending. So when they took off, I saw that I just went straight into the bush. I went to sit down there until everybody left. The people re remained there waiting for me were my useless friends <laughs> that helped me measure the metric. That's why the supporters don't count. Kizo, Kizo. They've all gone. After Kizo, they didn't. Didn't win. <laughs> Are you here, somebody? I didn't, I didn't fail in that race that day. It wasn't that day I failed. I failed from when I did not practice. I failed from when I did not learn anything about running. I failed from when I chose useless friends as my advisors. So the issue is, are you successful in marriage or not? We can determine today. How many books on marriage have you read? How many good teachings on marriage have you heard? What is your idea of a good marriage? What is your picture? What is your perspective? How prepared are you? How are you balancing in life altogether? The mistake some young people also make is that they read only marriage books. You don't succeed in marriage by reading marriage books alone. Your financial habits. How are you doing financially? I don't mean you must have all the money in the world, no. But your general financial behavior. Because these are the things that cause problems in marriage. Your general emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence. Pity you'll be amazed at how many people are not emotionally mature. We can't be in a WhatsApp group, for instance, or be in a, in a group talking, and somebody say, oh, I lost my mother yesterday. And the next thing another person says that, me too, I lost my dog the other week. Or I, I, I lost my best friend also. And that's not the time. Okay? You might have lost your own best friend too. Or you lost your own dad last year. But when somebody says that, you first react to what they have said. You first talk to them about how, how are they taking it, hope you are good. In a later conversation, you can talk about your dog, your best friend, or your, what happened to you last year. You see, that's basic emotional intelligence. What makes marriage fail is not the big things. It's that I'm talking, you're not listening. That's it all. I'm talking, you are not listening. I say, my leg is pinning me. You say, there's much. How does what I'm saying now affect this thing you are saying? That's how they broke the guy's building tower of Babel. That's the same way Satan is breaking marriages. 
once we are not of one language and not of one speech. We can't communicate. That's how powerful communication is. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Some people are not sensitive to other human beings at all. There are things you can't tell someone when you meet them and you don't know them. You can't say you are fat. You can't tell somebody that. You don't know them. You don't even know they're, they're fatter than this before. And this that they are even losing weight. Now you're going to discourage them. They'll go and eat hamburger now. <laughs> From here. And even if they were not fat as this before, that's not how you relate with people. Because, see, I'm a counselor. This is the thing that breaks the marriage. It's not a big deal. It's just that this person doesn't know how to talk. You don't know when to say, I miss you. You are not tender towards your partner. You are not thoughtful. There are about 10 T's in one of my new books titled um, Strong Marriages Don't Just Happen. Because strong marriages don't just happen. You're not tough. Now, oh, my wife is coming back from a trip. What will she eat? Because she will just be coming back, she'll be too tired. What you are thinking is that, let her come quickly so that she can cook what we will eat. You're not tough. Because that guy, for instance, the case of that guy saying pound six pound a diem. And even, let's say you were even not thoughtful and you said that, and she gets home and tells you, only her can pound it. That's a good discussion. So let's start finding solutions. Do I want to tell these guys to help me pound? Or should we buy something else? Should you st- you see, that's, that's thoughtfulness. These are things that break the marriage. We're not talking. You're not thoughtful. You're not tender. There are times to hug. No words will be enough. Just hug. Just be there. Just listen. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Marriages are failing before they start. Nobody fails in marriage. People always fail before marriage. That race, anybody that knew about sports would know I've already failed before the day. From when I smoke and after smoking, I ran around in dormitory. And the useless friends calculate for me how many times I need to. I've failed. I've already failed. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I'll end with this, then we'll take some questions. We'll take a break. It depends on how the directors. Another major challenge I see in young people is that, again, that's what I'm telling you. That's why I started talking about how, what you're exposed to. All they are going through now is tied to what you're exposed to. This is why you can't trust just what you think. Please trust what God thinks. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I can't hear you. Somebody get what I'm saying? The whole idea of the Bible, the whole idea of church, the whole idea of meetings like this is that we are trying to expose you to what God thinks. Because what God thinks is the best way for you to live your life. Not what you think. I don't care what you think. All of us, we think different things. But when we bring it beside what God thinks, please be flexible enough to adjust your own to what God, not to what I think. Forget what I think. Please follow what God thinks. He's the creator of marriage. It wasn't those talk shows that created marriage. It wasn't the blogs that created marriage. It wasn't your favorite celebrity that created marriage. Are you here, somebody? Who created marriage? I can't hear you created marriage. I even see therapists and counselors that say things like, uh, let's put God aside. Christians say that. Let's put the Bible aside. You must be massively joking. You want to talk about marriage and you want to put the author aside. Who would you consult then? Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So let's put the Bible aside. I even some people that say, I want counseling, but not, I don't want a pastor. I don't want Bible. Just somebody that will therapy that will just talk to me. You are joking. The person that created the mind, the person that created the therapist, the person that created the psychologist is talking. Then you want to go and consult a human being. You have no respect. And the Bible said, the fear of the Lord or the respect of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Outside of that, you are going to be in foolishness. Is somebody getting what I'm 